Five G-Shocks that everyone should own. Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. So I have been a big fan of the G-Shock for a couple of years now, and I believe I've found five Gs you should be owning. This is what it's all about. A quartz movement with an LCD screen encased in rubber. This was the ingenious design from Kiko Ibe and the team at Casio. Wish I thought of it. Now the very first G-Shock came out in 1983 and believe it or not, it wasn't that popular to start with. In actual fact, it was this advert that came out in America in I think 1984 of an ice hockey player using a G-Shock as a hockey puck. This was their hero advert, the reason why they're there are bazillion G-Shocks out today and there are tons and tons of different shapes, sizes and functionality. The G-Shocks I do own tend to have a historic significance to them. For example, the DW5400, the first round case G-Shock back in 1985. Another one being the DW5900, came out in 1992 and was the first G-Shock to have a triple graph display. Even though I really like those watches and I bought them, the next five are the ones I feel you should own to really get the most out of a G-Shock. Before I give you my top five, let me tell you about today's sponsor, the Watch Crunch. The place where no snobs are allowed, where you can talk everything watches and nobody else gets bored because everyone else is into watches. It's a great place to meet new people with the same passions and the hobbies as you. You can post photos, opinions, and follow other watch enthusiasts. In fact, come and follow me. It literally takes five minutes to set up an account and as soon as you do, you can start posting away. Come on over to Watch Crunch and let's build a better and brighter watch world without the snobbery. Okay, at number one, pretty obvious, but awesome at the same time, it's the original G-Shock Square. As I said, the original came out in 1983. It wasn't until that advert I showed at the start of the show with the reference DW5200 did sales start picking up. Now this, the DW5600E, is the G-Shock that has the closest resemblance to that Hero G-Shock. They call it the Hero because it saved the whole G-Shock range. These used to be dirt cheap, like 40 pounds. Nowadays, to pick up a basic 5600, it's about 70 pounds. It has an alarm, a countdown timer, and a stopwatch, and a fabulous electro-illuminescent backlight. For anyone wanting to get into G-Shocks, but are afraid of the size of them, the original G is their best one to get into first. I have to say a special mention to the GW5610. This one is an upgrade to the basic model. It has solar powered, multi-band six, a really cool frame around it like the very first one in 1983. And if you want a G-Shock you just don't need to worry about for like 20 years, get this one. It's around the hundred pound mark, but for the extra functions you get over the basic model, it's hard not to go with this one. I do like having both though. <laughs> okay, a big milestone for G-Shock in 1985 was the release of the DW550. Look at that. This was the first mud resistant G-Shock. So even tougher than a regular one. I love it even more because it starred on the wrist of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film, The Running Man. Quality movie. The reason why it was mud resistant was basically because it had plastic resin shrouds covering the pushers. And that means nothing would get into the case of this watch. So in my mind, a mud resistant G-Shock has to be one of the best G-Shocks you could buy. And my pick for you to get is the G9000. You can still get a reference that has the red pushers. I went for this tactical green color. On the downside, it does have a negative display, but it's a pretty good one. This reference came out in 2007. It doesn't look anything like the original, but it doesn't really look like any other reference in the range. It has that asymmetrical case, round pushers on the right hand side, rectangular ones on the left. The pushers are quite stiff. The stainless steel frame that is exposed on the resin case really looks cool. There are aren't any other G-Shock case backs with this mole on it. The Mudman was marketed towards rally drivers. I don't know why. I mean, the cars are going along in the mud, not them. But just in case they have to change a tire, they've got the Mudman. This watch has two stopwatch functions. It also has an amazing five second countdown, which I think is awesome. A countdown timer and a world time. Also, unlike any other G-Shock, when you press the illuminator button in the middle of the case, it's not just the screen that lights up, it's the the 
text around it. And I absolutely love that. This Mudman is not very big. I think it looks fantastic on my wrist, very similar to the original G. And I don't think many people really are aware of the Mudman. Get one. I think they're about 80 pounds. Okay, a next G-Shock that I just think is really cool. It's one of the most popular Gs in their range and has been going since 1995. And I am talking about the DW6900. Immortalized on Tom Cruise's wrist in Mission Impossible 2. This watch pulls in the triple graph display from the 5900, as well as the backlight button in the middle from another reference. This watch still looks the same as the original that came out in 95. It has your alarm, your countdown timer, and your stopwatch. Awesome electro illuminescence that just glows up the face. As the 5600 does with the 80s, the 6900 epitomizes the 90s for me. So long the 80s, bring on the 90s. These two together are cool. Um, could you just click that like button please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. Now I'm a sporty kind of guy. I'm a tennis coach by day and I wear all my G-Shocks without a single care in the world, knowing they're gonna survive whatever I do to them. Last year I went on holiday to the lovely island of Crete and I wanted a tough do anything watch, but with a blingy tinge. Yes, the only G-Shock I have where form takes over function and that is the GM-2100, otherwise known as the Cassioke. The architecture inside that dial is magnificent. The concentric circles, the different finishing. Anyone was to see this on your wrist as you walked by, they would think that this watch was very expensive. Now it's not your normal resin price, it's about 150 pounds. But to me, it's the perfect holiday watch. You can wear it on the yacht. On the rubber dinghy. But also you can take it out to a lovely meal for two. This watch covered all bases for me when I went away. And I think in a G-Shock collection, everyone could do with an all-rounder. We've got world time, stopwatch, Countdown timer, five alarms. I love that pencil sharpener indicator on the left telling you the day of the week. As you can see, it's a little battered now. The one drawback with a stainless steel G-Shock, it can take a beating, but it will show the scars more easily. That being said, I really love this watch and wholeheartedly recommend it to you. Last but not least, we come to a watch that I absolutely love. I didn't think I would. I'm quite an old fashioned type of guy. The rest of my G-Shocks are quite historic, whether they've been in an old film or were the first reference, you know, but I have found it very, very hard not to wear it. And I am talking about the beautifully modern GBD 200. Even though the case does resemble a G-Shock square, it looks absolutely far from vintage. The screen has a MIP display, which is memory in pixel, like you find in your old Nokia phones, but the legibility of this watch completely blows every other G-Shock I own out of the water. For anyone with dodgy eyes, this thing is incredible. The resin strap is much more supple and modern than the others. The functionality is very modern. This connects to your phone. If you want it to. You can receive messages. It tells you whether you've got a call coming. You can log workouts. I have got rid of all of the smartwatch functions. Apart from the step counter, I do like that, but this doesn't have to connect to my phone to do it. It does only have a one year battery life, but flipping heck, your smartwatch is out there. They need charging every day. This is about a hundred pounds right now online. And I have to say, please don't be scared of the smartwatch functionality. You don't need to use it. I mean, look, you could probably tell the time from here. Can you see that? That is incredible. And for that alone, you need to buy one. <laughs> To me, these five G-Shocks represent huge value. They have their own iconic design. Some are picked out from the 80s, the 90s, the nowsies. But just having these five G-Shocks in a collection is pretty awesome. I'd love to know your top five G-Shocks you think someone else should own. Can my collection be beaten? Probably G-Shock have made quite a few, haven't they? If you've watched up till now, thank you so much. If you want a bit more of the Mad Watch Collector, why don't you join? Click this button right there. <laughs> and if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you check this show out? This is on my... This is unbelievable. This is Oscar winning <laughs> at Oscar's house. Um, but yeah, click it. It's beautiful. Watches are a fantastic videography, second to none. Um, go for it. Go on, click it. Click it. Go on, click. Click it.